About a year and a half ago, I made a video where I replaced my old server cabinet that I had in the living room with this IKEA Besta cabinet to act as an AV cabinet. And I mean, I was happy with it at the time, and I still am, I mean, it does the job. But just over time, I've kind of not been the best fan of how this looks. I just didn't really think about the time when I built it, I, was, I thought this would look fine. And it's okay, but the problem is it looks very top heavy to me and kind of just looks like it's stuck in the corner. And then in terms of the style, when I first did it, I mean, I'm not an expert in interior design at all, but when I first did it, I think I decided, right, I'll go with white and grey so it kind of blends into the wall and disappears, which obviously it doesn't do. And I don't know, I'm just, just not a fan of how it looks. And then a few months ago, I bought a new cabinet for the other corner of the room, it's like the opposite side of the room from this. And it's an Ikea Fialbo. And it's a sort of, you know, metal industrial style cabinet with a couple of shelves and a couple of cupboards. And I actually really like how it looks. So I did a bit digging on the IKEA website and found that they actually sell the same thing essentially, but half the height. So it's not got any of the shelves at the top, it's just the bottom two cupboards and where they cost more than the one with the, the taller one, but anyway. And I thought, oh, that could work really well to replace this with one of those. So I was just sort of browsing around and when I checked the IKEA website most recently, I saw that it was listed as last chance to buy. So it seems to be end of life. Not the whole range, they still have lots of other stuff in the range, including the same unit but three cupboards wide. But the two cupboard version seems to be end of life. So I thought, right, I kind of need that now because the three cupboard one would just be a bit too wide for the space. So I jumped at it and bought it. So in today's video, we're going to basically do exactly the same thing I did a year and a half ago and pull all this stuff out again, build a new cabinet, build it into the new cabinet, or put the cabinet in the corner, move the AV stuff into the new cabinet, and see how it looks. So yeah, time to basically replace or rebuild my entire AV setup once again, but hopefully this time it'll look a little bit nicer. And of course while I'm doing it, I'll do a bit of a tour of the AV setup as it is currently, because of course stuff changes over time between, between the videos I do, so I can kind of give a bit of an update. So yeah, so the first thing we need to do is get the new cabinet out, build it, which I love doing, I'm far too obsessed with building IKEA furniture, then I can rip the entire AV setup out of here, put the new cabinet in the corner, and move the AV setup into it. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to build everything into the new cabinet yet, because the simplest form would just be put the cabinet down, put the stuff in it, and that'll do, and then it's going to be a bit tricky to manage the cables because it's a mesh cabinet, so you will see all the cables, whereas this one I have had the kind of had the benefit that I can just dump cables inside in a total mess and hide it behind the door, so I'll have to think a bit about the cable management. And additionally, I've got the subwoofer down here, I'm not sure. I could just put it to the left of the cabinet and that would be fine. But I'm toying with the idea of seeing if I could fit it inside the cabinet because this sub is not its not set to a super high level. It just provides some slight low end reinforcement. So it doesn't shake anything. So I don't think it would acoustically cause problems inside the cabinet. So that might be more discreet and look nice, but I'll really need to have a play with it. So basically the first thing to do is build the cabinet, put it in the court, take all this old stuff out, and just do a bunch of test fitting to see how I think it all goes together, and then I'll put it together properly. So, yeah, time to get the cabinet in. Well, build it. Okay, so I've unpacked it now and I've got the instructions out. Yes, I am actually briefly checking the instructions before I inevitably totally ignore them and do it all wrong. But what I'm trying to do is figure this out because the way this cabinet is designed anyway is that you basically have a single big fixed shelf that runs across the entire centre of it. And that is kind of fixed statically in the centre. It doesn't look like you can really move it up and down. I think it is kind of just sits in that position, although you can maybe drill holes to move it up and down, but I think it does have pre-drilled holes set in a certain position right in the middle of it. But because I'm still toying with the idea of putting the sub in the cabinet, I ultimately don't think I will, but I kind of want to just try it and see. What I think I'm going to try and do is build it without putting this middle shelf in for now, because you kind of put the middle shelf in, and then after you've done that, then you put the top on, I think. Yeah, then you put the top on. And I think structurally it must be fine without this middle shelf because the other cabinet doesn't have one, the one I've already got. But obviously if I put the middle shelf in I won't be able to get the sub in. But if I do decide to put the sub in the cabinet, I'll need to do something to like cut this middle shelf down, like cut it in half and then put it in like that. And obviously I don't want to cut it down until I'm definitely sure that I want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll build it without the middle shelf for now, try the sub in it, maybe play some bassy music through it just to see does it resonate, does it work. And also, more importantly, is there enough space left in the cabinet for the rest of the equipment if the sub is in there? And then at that point, I'll decide whether I want to actually cut the, sh cut the middle shelf down and put the sub in there, or if I just abandon that plan, put the shelf in fully and just put the sub down next to it on the floor. So, yeah. Basically, I just need to build it, 
bits off the instructions just to try and do it without the middle shelf and we'll, we'll see how we get on. I'm not going to film the whole thing because that would be an absolute nightmare to film. I'll maybe throw together a little time lapse just to, you know, <laughs> provide a bit of entertainment. But yeah, definitely can't show the whole build process because that will just take hours. Okay, so that's the cabinet now built. And it's actually pretty easy. I mean, I've built the other one before, so I'm fairly familiar with how these go together, but yeah, pretty easy to put together. There's a few little scratches on it, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully that'll be fine. I will probably won't notice them too badly. But yeah, that's all put together, minus the internal shelf. So obviously normally there'll be a shelf across here that'd be attached onto these pieces here, and then a screw in the middle. As I, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna leave that out for now. Try the sub in here, see how I feel about it. And I mean, I probably won't put the sub in it, but I just wanna see. And if I do want the sub in it, great, I'll cut this shelf down and then put it in there. And if not, I'll just take it out and put the shelf in as you're meant to. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be a bit fiddly to put the shelf back in. I think I'll have to sort of take the top off, take one side off and then slide it in. But I mean, the work the work's done in terms of the doors are now put on and stuff, so it won't be too hard to modify it or, to, or to at least put the shelf back in. But yeah, that's all now built. And I definitely quite like how this looks, definitely. I'm just looking at it compared to the old one. Obviously the old one's got stuff in it and on it and stuff, but the old one looks like a sort of hodgepodge of just like piles of bits stuck together, whereas this looks more like a cabinet. So yeah, definitely happy with how it looks. So, well, I guess that means now I need to actually take the AV set apart and move it all onto this. Okay, so now I've moved the new cabinet out of the way. So now I need to once again, rip the whole AV set apart again and well, reassemble it in the new cabinet. Okay, so that's the cabinet now out of the way. And for people who are watching this that haven't seen my previous stuff, I'll just do a quick tour of what I've got behind the AV cabinet. 
Obviously, I've shown this in full detail where I did a full installation of this a couple of years ago, or a good few years ago now, four years ago, I think. But, you know, I thought I'd just do a quick tour and show really what I've got here. So on the right-hand side here, fairly simple, double socket power at all, and then four network jacks. These are all Cat6 cables that run from here back to, an AV, back to, back to a sort of wall-mounted cabinet in the hall cupboard. So I think, you know, these, most of these go to, the first three go to just network switch for network, but because it's going to a patch panel, I can do fancy stuff. For example, the fourth one here is patched through to a different port at the back of the room as a direct connection, not through the switch. So what I've been using that for previously is for HDMI over CAT6 to feed a projector. So the projector can sit at the back of the room, plugged into that port. This can go into an HD, HDMI to CAT6 converter, and I can send HDMI over those cables. But the good thing is it's all totally flexible, so I can totally move that around. But yeah, there's four CAT6 connections there. Then on this plate here, we've got speaker connections. These are just standard binding posts, and these go to various speakers around the room. I've got a 5.1 system, so basically there's five different speakers. So front right, front left, centre, surround right, surround left, and you just plug across each of these. And people have asked what these are, or where I got them from and stuff. They were from a company called Euro Network in the UK, and essentially it's four Euro modules. Two that, what, like each one has different coloured binding posts, so this one has three red binding posts, this has three black, two red, two black, and you sort of put them in there and label them up and make stuff faceplate. You can also get pre-made ones like this, you don't need to buy the Euro modules, but by doing this it means I can buy it and then fit it into a faceplate that matches my other electrical accessories, so this is, it looks exactly the same as all the other stuff because it's the same plate, just with different modules in it. And then finally over here we've got the stuff for the aerial, satellite and HDMI. So we've got an HDMI connection from here up to the TV. We've got this quadplex module, which is basically what the system in the building uses. There's a, it's a flat of the communal aerial distribution system with a multi-switch. So it comes into this, which gives me two satellite connections, an FMDAB radio connection, and a TV aerial connection here. Then this here connects the structured cabling in the building. The bottom one's labelled TV return. That's a direct cable from here to TV aerial amplifier in the hall cupboard. And then the top one is labelled SAT to TV, which I used to use to use to connect the built-in satellite tuner of my TV, which is on the wall. There's just a bit of coax from here up to the behind the TV, and what I used to have is a cable from this satellite connection here into this just to feed it up to the TV. Nowadays, because I've got a satellite box that sits in this corner, I don't use this anymore. Although what I have actually done previously is I've made up these adapters here, which are just RCA to F plug. And what I was doing with this is connecting that into there, and then one on the other end, and using that to send composite video up to the TV. This was just when I was playing with old games consoles. I had an old PS2 and a Wii in this cabinet. I might bring them back out now. But my AV receiver can't convert analog to digital sources. So what I was able to do is connect the com composite output of the receiver into this and feed up the TV to get the PlayStation 2 and the Wii on the TV. So yeah, I've been able to reuse that coax, but I won't be using it right now. And then the final thing you'll see is this here, which will upset a lot of people because people get very upset about things. Um, this is a masthead amplifier, and yes, this is a bodge. Basically, this is a TV aerial connection, so it's not cable, it is just coming over an aerial through the air. But due to the distance of my flat from the roof, and also presumably the room that's got multi-switch in it, my aerial signal here is quite weak, like it's really weak. And if you use a short patch lead to the TV, you'll get all the channels, but as soon as you use a slightly long cable, you just, can't have, you just have channels dropping out and breaking up. And the problem is from here to the hall cupboard where the main distribution amp is, it's probably about 10 metres of cable. So as soon as you have a connection between the aerial input and the TV return and go all the way to the whole cupboard, you just lose the signal and you don't get a picture or you just lose loads, loads of channels. So the bodge I did here was put this masthead amplifier in, which is designed to go on like actually on the mast with the aerial to allow the signal from the aerial to survive length of coax from the aerial down to your room. But instead I put it down here. So all it does is when it comes in here, it slightly amplifies the signal and then feeds that signal back to the distribution amp in the whole cupboard. And this is line powered, so the distribution amp powers this. So it's designed to work with that distribution amp and it works pretty well. And yeah, it's maybe not best practice and it'll probably upset some cable guy, but it didn't work before I put this in and now it works. So that's the logic I'm going to use. It fixed the problem. So I don't care if it's not best practice, it fixed the problem. So yeah, that's it. Oh, basically what I've got in this corner here. So yeah, I guess the next step is to get the cabinet in and then try test fitting all the equipment in it. Okay, so I've now moved the cabinet back into the corner. And I actually quite like how this looks here. And I've put the sub down there, and to be honest, I think it actually looks okay. It does make it quite wide, but yeah, it's okay. Um, I'll still try it in the cabinet just, just to, you know, satisfy my curiosity, but if I do have to put it down the side, that's totally fine. But I thought what I'll do, quickly do is go through what I've got in the cabinet, because again, things change over time, and, you know, some people won't have seen, this, seen my previous videos. So 
here's the sort of actual equipment that's going in. So we have a, an AV receiver, which is a Denon AVR X2400H. I've had this for absolutely years. I think I got it back in 2017. It's a great receiver and there's no need to really upgrade it. It still supports, you know, 4K HDR and all the stuff I'd use currently. So it's totally fine. Um, that's going back in. We've got my satellite box, which is a Mutant HD51. It's a weird sort of off-brand Linux satellite receiver. I just use it to get free to air channels, but compared to like a FreeSat box, it just gives a bit more flexibility around like being able to tune in additional free to air channels that aren't on FreeSat or to like stream the video across the network, which is quite useful. I can like stream it to different rooms and stuff. It's a little bit glitchy, you know, being all Linux and sort of dodgy custom firmware, but it does work. I'll look at other options in the future, but yeah, it's doing the job fine. Had that for a while as well, made a video about that previously. Here we have a Mac Mini. This is a 2018 base model. Um, again, another also made a video about this because I got this for a very good price. I can't remember at what point it was, but they took the base model as Intel one with the i3, but they upgraded the base model from having 128 gigs of storage to 256 gigs. So this was the old base model that had 128 gigs of base storage. So Currys were selling it for about 500 pounds brand new. So that's a pretty good price. So that sits in the cabinet. It just does like home theater PC type duties. Works perfectly fine to be honest. And then a few other bits here. We've got a power strip. So that's just a decent brand Bren stool one. Just I wanted something that was not cheap quality that was going to break. So that's a decent one. Um, it'll do for now. I think I have maxed out, but it'll be okay for, for now. I might need to upgrade that later. A couple of little bits of extra equipment. So this is an HDMI EDID emulator. I was using this previously. I made a video about it because I was experiencing EDID dropouts that were upsetting the Mac Mini and causing it to stop outputting video. And this helped. I'll see if I'm still having these issues. And if I'm not, I might take it out, but I might put that back in just if it starts causing problems. Here we have an HDMI capture card, which seems a bit weird to have in here. But again, if you've seen my previous video where I made a sort of DIY Ambilight type TV backlight system, what this does is it sits connected to the secondary output of my AV receiver. So one output of the receiver goes to the TV, the other output of the receiver comes into this, and then this plugs into the Mac Mini. And then the Mac Mini runs Hyper HDR, which takes the video capture from this and uses it to control the LEDs. And that works perfectly fine. I'm still tempted to replace the Mac Mini, well, add in a Pi to run Hyper HDR instead of running it on the Mac Mini, but like use a Raspberry Pi instead, but yep, that'll be going back in. And then down here, I've done what I've needed to do for a very long time, and I've got some brand new HDMI cables. Because what I've done in here is I've basically used HDMI cables that I've had lying around, which, you know, I've probably got with a monitor or bought in a supermarket or whatever. Just over the years when I've needed an HDMI cable, I've bought a cheap one. And that's fine, but now I'm trying to do 4K60 with HDR. I'm having all sorts of little dropouts. Certain cables don't work. Certain cables work between certain devices, but not other devices. I can see a cable down there that I know for a fact I bought in about 20, 2011, 2010. So that's, you know, ten, over 10 years old. And it's just kind of becoming a bit of a nightmare. So what I did is finally I was like, right, I've had enough problems with HDMI cables. Every cable I've been using previously is, is not going to be put in again. I'll keep them as spares, but it's not going to go into the setup. And I've got a, pa a couple of packs of brand new cables. So these are from a brand called Cable Matters, which I've used for a few, used for a few different things, especially like DisplayPort cables. And they've generally been pretty good. You go on Amazon, you get lots of sort of brands of cables that aren't really brands. They're just like, you know, Amazon drop shipping type brands. So I thought at least Cable Matters is a proper company and I've not had issues with them. So I've bought basically a bag of two meter cables, a bag of one meter cables. And I'll put links to these in the description if I remember. But the idea is that, is that these are cables that are, you know, certified for HD, well, 8K HDMI, so that'll be HDMI 2.0 or 2.1 or whatever. I mean, as long as it's 2.0, that's fine. But at least these are going to be certified for the sort of signals I'm sending over them, so just to avoid any issues, because the amount of problems I've had that have been attributed to cheap old HDMI cables for 25 quid or whatever these cost, it's so much worth so worth it just replacing them all. So, yeah, some new HDMI cables as well. And then finally down here, we've got my sub, which is a BK Electronics XLS 200FF, which is a really decent front-firing subwoofer. I made a video again about this previously. I absolutely love this thing. It goes down super low, and because it's a sealed enclosure, not a ported enclosure, it's not super loud, but it's very precise. So when you're playing music through it, it's not like it's just sort of rumbling and shaking the room. It doesn't really do that, but it just adds a really nice, crisp, responsive low end. So I absolutely love this sub. And for the price, it's really good value. So yeah, that's the sub I've got there. It's almost a shame that it's white because I bought it to match the old cabinet and I'm trying to work out if a black one would look better. They also do a walnut one which would match the top, the wood on the top of the cabinet, but I think actually, yeah, the white's maybe better. I don't know. But well, I've got it now anyway, so I can't change it. So yeah, that's the sub I've got there. So yeah, that's it. That's everything's got to go in this cabinet. 
And I guess what I'll now do is I'll go and figure out how it's all going to fit. But I'll do all that off camera because as fun as it would be to have a time lapse of me putting things in and taking it out and putting things in and taking it out, I'll probably just lose my temper with the camera getting in the way. So yeah, I'll go away, see if I can get all this fit in, come up with a solution as to how it's all going to fit, and I'll come back and show it when it's done. Okay, so I've now done a bit of testing. So what I've done is I've put the sub in the cabinet and I've decided to put it on the right-hand side because that would be even more out of the way and then the equipment, the actual receiver and stuff would sit on the left. And I've done a bit of testing and to be honest, I don't really notice the sound quality being at all degraded. Um, it's definitely a bit louder when it's in there, but I think that's because it's more in the corner of the room rather than because it's in the cabinet. And I don't really notice any sort of resonance. The cabinet doesn't seem to be vibrating really much at all. Um, it maybe vibrates a little bit, but no more than, like, say, the floor or the wall next to the sub. And there's no real difference between the door and the cabinet being opened or closed, so it's not like the door's rattling or anything, so it's... It seems, to be honest, okay, so I'm almost actually inclined to go with this. Because it just keeps it so much more out of the way. I've also got a black grill for the sub, it came with both because I bought it second hand, so I've taken the white one that it came with, or well, that I was using previously off and put the black one on it. And that's now even more discreet behind the door. And what I could even do is get some sort of, even just cheap self-adhesive vinyl or something and just stick it around the sub just to kind of make the whole thing look black. But that is kind of discreet, I kind of like it. I know it's going to upset a lot of audio files, but equally, I could also tell them the fact that I'm using a normal extension lead that's not filtered or, you know, cheap speaker wire and you watch them all get upset over the fact I've not, you know, bought a diamond plated socket to plug it into, but you know. Um, it's maybe not going to be amazing for the sound quality, but it's it's fine. I don't notice any difference. And I've played a lot of music that I really that I really recognise and I'm really familiar with and that has a very sort of detailed bass line and it's, it's kind of fine. So I'm actually inclined to go with that. The only difficulty I have is that this sub has spikes on the bottom of it, as do a lot of subs. This one in particular, they're really sharp. I stabbed myself in the arm and there's now still a little puncture mark on my arm, which is great. Um, but the only problem is that this cabinet has a mesh base, so the spikes don't really work, they just fall through it. I first of all tried it without the spikes and it was fine, but I did notice it's shaking the floor a little bit more and it was a little bit more boomy. So what I've ended up doing is the least you know, audio file thing possible and put a chopping board under it. So it's now got the spikes, but it's sitting on a plastic chopping board just so it's not falling through the cabinet. And that does seem to have you know, stopped it vibrating the cabinet even more and now it barely vibrates the cabinet really. Um, obviously that's not as good as a permanent solution, but what I could either do is get a bit of wood, you know, a bit of plywood or MDF, cut it down, thin, paint it black, put it underneath, or potentially get spikes that actually have a little cup underneath, a little flat base that would sit in the cabinet, or maybe rather get rid of the spikes and put some sort of isolation pad underneath. But I'm going to do a bit more listening, but I think this is actually a winner because it just looks so much more discreet in there. Keeps it totally out of the way. This cabinet's wider, but it means I don't really lose much floor space to having this cabinet because the sub's not sitting next to it and the sub's sitting next to it does then start creeping out into the middle of the room a little bit because it's so wide. And yeah, it's fine. The only thing I've noticed really is it's a bit louder because it's in the corner. But all I need to do is just turn it down a little bit, so <laughs> that's not a problem at all. So yeah, I'm going to get a lot of hate comments, I'm sure, unless people won't write the hate comments because I've acknowledged the fact I'm going to get hate comments because that's usually how it works. But anyway, um, I'm going to hate for it, but I think I might actually put it in the cabinet because it just is so much more discreet. And with things like this, there's always a trade-off. Yes, you can do things to make the most amazing sound quality possible. You know, you can get super fancy cabinets and all this sort of stuff and, the, and you know, acoustically treat the room if you're going that far. But for me, this is my living room. You know, it's not a dedicated cinema room. It's not a dedicated audio listening room. It needs to work as a living room as well. So actually being able to get all this stuff out of the way in the corner, hidden away, having giving me loads of extra free, free floor space to have in the room and just have it look nice, that is almost as equally as important as the sound quality. But as I mentioned, I don't actually notice any real degradation in the sound quality at all having it in there. So yeah, I think I'll need to do this. The only problem now is I'll need to modify the internal shelf to not extend into where the subwoofer is which is going to be a bit of a problem because it's a full width shelf with a full bit of wood, full width with a bit of wood only to now cut down. Equally, it's not really that real wood. It's very Ikea cardboard wood type stuff. So hopefully it's okay, but we'll go a bit closer and see how I'm going to try and cut this down and see if I totally destroy the cabinet and have to buy a new one or something because this could go wrong, but let's see. Okay, so here we see the components that make up that internal shelf. And what you basically got is a bit of wood. Well, wood, it's not really wood. And then these two bars, and basically what these do, bars do is they go across inside the cabinet like that horizontally, and this wood sits on top of them. 
So what you basically have is these two will sort of sit like that inside the cabinet, obviously spaced much more apart. And then this wood will sit on top. And that's fine because when I first looked at this, I panicked because I noticed that these bits of metal only have the screw fixings on each end. There's nothing in the middle. And that would mean that if I was, if it say this sat either side of that bit of wood, there'd be no support here. But that's fine because what I can do is I can cut these down to the appropriate length, fit, fasten it in, and then yes, this wood will only be fixed on at one end. It won't be fixed on in the middle. That's fine because gravity will hold it in place. You know, I could get like a little angle bracket or something, but because it sits on these, it'll be totally fine. And then I'll also need to cut down this bit of wood. So these will be easy. I'll just need to hacksaw them. That'll be fine. This I'll need to have a think about because I do have a circular saw, but I, I don't, I can't be bothered getting it out if I can avoid it. But equally, I want quite a neat cut. But it's definitely very hollow. You know, it's, it's the sort of thing. I think if you rock it, maybe not this one, but the top definitely was. You could hear like little bits of wood ra like rattling around inside it because it's clearly hollow. So hopefully, it's not too hard to cut that cut that in half. Now the downside will be is it won't have a very nice edge on it at the far end but that should be okay because that'll be where facing the sub so you won't see it and I'll just make sure that the nice end sits at this side of the cabinet because you will be able to see that sort of end of the wood and then if I did ever want to like repair the cabinet and put it back together again it'll be totally possible all I would do is use some sort of like steel plate inside the tube with a couple of screws through it just to kind of fix these two bits together and then realistically I'll just keep the off cut of wood and just butt it up against it and yes, I'll have a sort of slight seam and maybe a slightly rough edge here, but if you strategically put that join where there's something sitting on top of it, it'll probably be okay. So, so yeah, time to measure that and oh, try and cut this naff. And again, I'm definitely going to do that off camera because there's probably a lot of shouting and swearing and not getting it in place and then lots of tools going all over the place. So I'll, I'll come back once it's done and then explain how I've done it because currently I don't actually have a plan. Okay, so now I've cut it all down. That wasn't too bad. I just used a hacksaw to cut the metal, which was very blunt, and I couldn't find the other blades, so that took a while. And then to cut the wood down, I just used a coping saw. Turns out that actually it isn't totally hollow. I thought it was, but it actually, like, it either looks like solid wood or it's like, you know, like wood grain here with like chipboard in the middle. But I think it actually looks like solid wood, which is weird. Very, very light. It's obviously a very, a very sort of soft wood, but yeah, it wasn't too bad to cut down, though. And obviously, it does mean there's a very rough edge here, but all I need to do is just turn that so that's the edge that faces the sub, and that'll be fine. And what's really good with this actually is it gives me two different bits of wood, obviously, because you cut a bit of wood in half, you get two bits, what we're talking about. But this piece here works perfectly as a shelf, it's 60 centimetres wide, which leaves this off cut here, which is actually the perfect size to sit underneath the sub to hold it up off the mesh and have, allow the spikes to work. So that's really good. So I can slide that under there. That will solve the problem of the sub and give me somewhere to keep this off cut of wood for when I, if I never, ever want to reinstate the full shelf. So that's perfect. And then I've got the two offcuts of the metal bar there, which obviously I won't be using. But if I did ever want to join these on, on again, all I would really need is some sort of like steel plate that, sit, that fits inside this, you know, across here, put some screws in and just fix two bits back together again. It wouldn't be too painful to do if I did ever want to repair it. And obviously you'd have a slight gap but, and join, but that would be fixable. So yeah, pretty happy with it. And actually the other benefit is because I've now cut the shelf down, I think I can get the shelf in without actually having to take apart the whole cabinet again because if I was putting the whole shelf in I'd have to actually take it all apart and take the top off as I mentioned earlier but I think that if I'm careful enough angling it all in I can get these all put in without actually dismantling it so that would be incredibly useful if I can make it if I can make that work so yeah time to get the shelf in and see how it looks and there we go so that's the shelf in so that's absolutely that went in perfectly fine was easily able to do it without dismantling the cabinet which is really good and yep just pops in there and it's just sitting on those two bars you are meant to screw into the bit of wood from the bottom just to fix it onto those bars. But to be honest, the receiver's so heavy, it won't really slide around and it can't slide off. It might just slide a little bit. So I might just not bother just because I mean, it makes it easier to take it apart or move it around in the future. But yeah, that's perfectly fine. And you can see down there, we've got the other bit of wood, the offcut, sitting perfectly there, the, pre the perfect size for the sub to sit on. Plus, unlike a white plastic chopping board, that it's the same wood as the cabinet, so it almost looks intentional. I still might get a sub, you know, a sub isolation pad to remove the spikes and use that instead, but that seems to work perfectly for now. So yeah, the next step now is to get everything connected up and put back in. Now, I'd love to do a nice cool time lapse again, but it's going to be such a pain to get it all in because I'm going to put it all in loosely, get it all working, and then try and cable manage it all. And I'm going to probably need to buy bits to do the cable management because I've not really got much at the moment. So I'll get it all in, try it out, 
and then see if I can get it all working and get it all nice and neat, and then I'll come back once it's all actually working. So the next time you see this, it'll probably be you know a few days later once I've got it all tidied up. But yeah, definitely pleased with how it's looking so far. So then we get it all put in and reconnected. Okay, and we're back. And now I've got everything installed in the cabinet. And I'm so happy with how this turned out. I'm so glad I put the sub in there. It just looks great. So yeah, everything mounted in there. Sub on the right. Receiver on the bottom shelf because it was a bit tight to get it on the top shelf. And then the Mac Mini and satellite receiver on the top shelf. And it just fits in there so neatly. And this definitely looks so much better than what I had before. Like rather than looking like a functional AV cabinet, this actually looks more like a sort of decorative piece of furniture that's like, you know, not just functional. I definitely prefer it being a much lower, wider unit than the previous one, which was just a bit too tall and just looked a bit silly. So, yeah, that's it there. So I'll quickly go and take a quick look, a closer look at how I've got everything mounted in it. So on the left shelf, if we open that up, we can see, as I mentioned before, we have the AV receiver on the bottom shelf, my Mac Mini, and the satellite receiver sitting there. And then if we come over to the right, we'll see we have the sub. So we open that cover up, and that's the sub there. And I mentioned that I was probably considering like wrapping this in black to try and hide the white, but to be honest, it doesn't really look too bad. Like through the door, yeah, you see the white, but it, it actually looks okay, to be honest. I could actually make it all black if I wanted to, but I actually think the white's okay. It kind of you know, adds a little extra dimension to it. But yeah, it's there. And yeah, it's all pretty neat. I mentioned previously that I was going to like maybe buy some stuff for cable management, but to be honest, it's actually okay. And there is a slightly messy bit down here. Or basically some excess of the cable have just sort of like stuck in here. Although this isn't all excess cable, some of this is like a remote or like an HDMI or Cat6 adapter that I'm just not using that are more just like stored in here. So what I might even do is put like a little vertical bit of like black plastic or something at the back here just to fill that off, just so that all the excess cables are stuffed behind it. And there's like a little area here for like remotes and things. But that's the only sort of slightly messy bit is just this bit here, which is like some excess cable and some storage. But I could blank that off if I wanted to, but to be honest, the way the, the angle I look at it from is like this angle here. So once the door's shut, you don't really see any of that. But yeah, other than that, I didn't really need much cable management at all. There's a bit of extra sort of just excess parts that are stuck down there, but it's okay. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll quickly go around the back and we'll take a look at how I've sort of cable managed it. I mean, I've not really cable managed it, but I'll take a quick look at that. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how well this went together. And I'm so glad I cut that shelf down. Like, sure, from this angle, it's not the neatest finish. You know, you can see the sort of rough edge of the wood but I could potentially either get a sort of trim for that I could stick on if I was really bothered and I might try and get some sort of end cap for this metal tube just because that is quite sharp but to be honest it's fine like my only concern is if I was putting the sub in or out and I forgot about that I could kind of scratch the sub on it but I could get a little end cap for that that wouldn't be too hard it's just a generic little thing but yeah it seems to have gone together really well so yeah that's all installed there so what we'll now do is I'll quickly pull the cap out and look around the back see how it's all connected up but yeah, really happy with how this has turned out. And now here's a section where I get to make strangers on the internet irrationally angry, because here we have the lack of cable management, but it all works. So essentially what we've got here, it's got the Mac Mini, satellite box, and then this is the capture card that's being used for the LED strip. I made a video about that previously. It gets surprisingly hot in use, but it's fine. Um, over there we've got the sub, and then down here we've got the receiver. So all the speaker cables come out, the receiver on these banana plugs comes round here, and goes up to a wall plate over there. Here we've got the satellite cables, which both come out, and there's also an FM connection for the receiver. They come out, both go into the satellite box, and then the FM connection goes into the receiver down here. Don't use it, but may as well connect it. We've got the sub mounted there. That connects to the sub with the receiver with a single RCA cable. Ethernet goes over to the wall plate. There's three Ethernet connections, basically one for the Mac Mini, one for the satellite box, one for the receiver, and they go over to the wall plate over there. HDMI is pretty easy. For most of them, what I've just done is I've just stuffed the slack on top of the receiver because there's a bit of a gap up there. So the slack's all stuffed up there and they kind of vaguely neatly snake sort of out the receiver and up into the device on top. The Mac Mini does go through that EDID emulator, so that's sort of sitting down here, so it kind of is stuffed in there. So it's not the neatest, but it works absolutely fine. With these sorts of things, you can never get them amazingly neat just because of just purely just due to the number of cables that this sort of thing needs. You know, they need huge amounts of cable to make these sorts of things work, so... Yeah, it's not the neatest, but it works absolutely fine. And then what I've done for power, just because there wasn't much space, is I've mounted the power strip, you might not be able to see it, but I've mounted the power strip on the bottom of the cabinet. Just see it there. So all I did is I've just literally put a zip tie through, there's like a screw hole in the end, so I've just stuck a zip tie through and got it sitting through there, you probably can't make it out. But yeah, that's just sitting neatly mounted on the bottom there and all the plugs plug in there. 
And to be honest, it's fine. I can easily get these plugs in and out from there. The only one I can't do is the smart plug there that's powering the sub. It's perfectly fine, but I can't unplug it without tilting the cabinet. But honestly, it's not too bad at all. I have totally filled that power strip, so I might need to get an, an eight-way just because I think there's a couple of extra things I might want to put in the cabinet. But that mounts under there perfectly neatly. You don't really see it. And it gets it actually works quite well because it gets it totally out of the way and it frees up a lot of space in the cabinet. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy with how well this went together. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but it's neat enough and it's very easy to get out and get to the back of it, which actually is a big benefit over the previous cabinet, which I hadn't really thought about. But the previous cabinet had a solid back, so you couldn't really get behind the equipment, so any maintenance you did just resulted in a mess. Whereas with this, it is actually reasonably easy for me to just tilt it and curve it out like this without having to actually disconnect or move anything get around the back, adjust the cables, and slide it back into position again. So, to be honest, I think going forward, I'm going to stick to open pack cabinets. But yeah, that's the back of it. Probably going to get a lot of hate comments because, oh my god, you didn't manage the cables perfectly and didn't spend hours neatly doing it to perfection so you could post it online, but it's functional. But yeah, that's it there. So there you go. That was a video of my new AV setup. And as I've probably kept saying throughout this video and I see in all my videos, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Really nice sort of cabinet, looks really neat in the corner there, but it keeps everything out of the way. But it's still pretty easy to get into and maintain. Plus the mesh actually really helps for ventilation, like the equipment just doesn't get hot at all because it's in there. So yeah, really happy with it. And even though it's going to upset people the fact the sub has been put in a cabinet, I haven't noticed any sort of sound quality issues and I've had this for a good few days now at this point. And just having it out of the way just makes the whole room just feel so much cleaner than having that big thing sitting on the floor. So yeah, really happy with it. So there we go, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned because I've got a few quite interesting smart home related videos coming up so definitely stay tuned for those. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.